Since hopefully you already know how to create animations using onion skinning, we won't show you how we created the cast members that make up the fly animation and the hair animation. We'll just begin by adding the elements of our movie to the score. Now believe it or not, all the animation that you saw in the movie that we demonstrated only took up three frames. So as we recreate it, we have set our default sprite span to three. Um, first thing that we're going to add is our title, Fly Swatter. We want this to be in the background, everything else appearing on top of it. So we add it to the first channel in our score and position it to where it was before. Um, the next thing that we want is for our face to appear, uh, because we want everything to appear on top of the face, the fly and eyes and all that. So we drag the uh, the face uh, circle, basically it's a big circle, into our next sprite channel. And because we're dragging it into the score, it's going to automatically be centered, which is where we want it to be. All right. Uh, we want the eyes and the mouth to appear on top of that. So we're going to drag them onto the stage uh, so that they'll occupy the next three channels in the score. So let's drag an eye here. There's one eye. Here's another eye. And here's our open mouth. Drag it right there. Okay. Now notice both appear with uh, the white rectangle around them. In the case of the mouth, we can uh, set its ink effect to background transparent, and this will take care of the problem. Let's do that. Oops. Background transparent. OK, that looks good. However, when we try to do the same thing with the eyes, and we can select each of them, okay, um, something strange happens when we try to add background transparent. That's not the effect that we wanted. Now, to understand what happened here, we need to know how background transparent works its magic. This ink effect works by making any trans uh, by making transparent uh, any pixels in the stage, which are the same, or any pixels in the uh, in the cast member on the stage, which are the same as the background color. So, in the case of our eyes, this makes all the white pixels in our bitmap, including the whites of our eyes. Uh, transparent. We don't want that. So to fix this, we must change the ink effect to matte. And that's above background transparent. And matte only makes transparent the white pixels on the outside of our image, as you can see. All right, now we have our eyes, we have our mouth. Um, let's add our uh, hair to this. And I've already created a a hair film loop for this. And I don't know if you remember this, but uh, in order to set the ink effect on a on a loop, on a film loop, um, you set the ink effect on the original animation that makes up the film loop. Uh, so I won't set, set the ink effect, but I did set it before. And I set it as matte. All right? And if we drag this into our score and, and position it, we see it's you know transparent, basically. Now, Either matte or background transparent would have worked fine here. Um, but the matte ink effect takes up fewer processor cycles. Uh, it takes up less processing power. And so uh, we use that. And so the general rule to remember here is that when either matte or background transparent will work just as well, use the matte ink effect because it's more efficient. Okay. Now next, we add the animation of the fly. For this one, I'm going to um, use cast to time because my previous experimentation with these behaviors that I'm going to attach to the fly uh, animation uh, showed me that, that, that making it a film loop would not work with those behaviors. So uh, I'm going to select all the cast members in my cast window that make up the fly animation, position my playback head at the beginning, and choose uh, Modify Cast to Time to insert that. Um, I'm going to set the, uh, the ink effect 
to something a little different. I'm not going to really explain why I'm doing this because it would just kind of take too much time, but uh, I'm using darkest here. And in this instance, it has mostly the same effect as background transparent or um, or um, uh, the other one, <laughs> um, matte. Uh, but I have my own reasons for that, and I'm just not going to explain that because that would take too much time. So uh, I've got the fly there, fly animation. Now on top of the fly, uh, I want the fly swatter. So drag that uh, into the onto the stage in the next slot. Uh, I set its ink effect to background transparent. Okay, and I do want background transparent because I want to be able to see through it to the fly underneath. If I set it to matte, what would we see? No, we wouldn't really see what, what we want. We want a fly swatter that you can see through the netting knife. So we choose background transparent. And I'm just going to move this out of the way here. Okay. Um, now, finally, I want the <coughs> sound uh, to be added to my score at the top in the sound channel. Um, actually, let's not do that yet. Let me take a look. Let me show you. Um, we want the sound to repeat over and over. If we play it now, listen, it stops. And it'll do that in our animation unless we set it to loop. And if we do that and we press play, well, it goes on and on and on. And that's not uh, very fun, but uh, that's what we want right now. So we set it to loop, and we're going to drag this into our sound channel, first sound channel. And there we go.